हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी डीएनए सीक्वेंसिंग बाय मैक्सिम गिलबर्ट मेथड मैक्सिम एंड गिलबर्ट वर द टू साइंटिस्ट डॉक्टर वाल्टर गिलबर्ट ही वाज अ फिजिशनिस्ट एंड ही वाज द वन हु वाज एसोसिएटेड विद द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ दिस मैक्सिम गिलबर्ट मेथड नाउ द टेक्निक इज एक्चुअली अ केमिकल टेक्निक टू डिटरमाइन द सीक्वेंस ऑफ डीएनए Now, uh, it actually involves chemical degradation of both the type of bases, that is, purines and pyrimidines. Uh, purines, as you know, they are Ag, adenine, and guanine. They are damaged in the presence of the chemical dimethyl sulfate. There is actually the methylation of the base, and uh, heat is released. There is a cleavage with the help of piperidine at the G base. Uh, which is the modified base by dimethyl sulfate uh, similarly we have pyrimidines like cytosine and thymine uh, these are da damaged by hydrazine which is another chemical that we use in this type of dna sequencing then piperidine it again cleaves the backbone at the type at the site of modified base uh, we also use nacl which is a salt to uh, to uh, help in this cleavage reaction so the maxim gilbert method this is a chemical based degradation methods uh, and uh, uh, it uses single stranded dna fragment uh, which is actually labeled with the help of uh, alkaline phosphatase that removes the 5 dash phosphate group and it is then labeled with uh, it is uh, we uh, sorry we actually add this phosphate which is labeled phosphate uh, with the help of polynucleotide kinase enzyme that attaches this labeled phosphate to the 5 dash terminal so uh, this is actually how we carry out the reaction uh, this i will be explaining with the help of figure so this is the figure uh, which actually shows how we start with the dna sequencing this is the double stranded sample dna as you can see in the figure now this sample dna which is double stranded this is converted to a single stranded dna and with the help of alkaline phosphatase we remove this 5 dash phosphate and we add the labeled phosphate with the help of polynucleotide kinase so now my strand is actually labeled now cleavage is done with the help of chemicals uh, in the four aliquots like we have mentioned in the previous slides like aliquot a we add dimethyl sulfate what this actually does is it methylates guanine residue and it actually modifies this guanine residue in the next tube we have which we call as aliquot b we add formic acid which modifies adenine and guanine residues in the third aliquot we have aliquot c Uh, in which we add hydrazine which modifies thymine and cytosine residue in the fourth helicot we have uh, which we label as helicot d it we add hydrazine plus nacl which makes the reaction specific for cytosine so coming back to the figure let's see here first is g reaction why we call it as g reaction because this is helicot a in which we have added dimethyl sulfate this is the aliquot second aliquot uh, which in which we are adding formic acid you can see here we are adding formic acid so formic acid it actually modifies a and sometimes it modifies g also in the third aliquot that is aliquot c as you can see here we have added hydrazine that modifies thymine and cytosine so here we have the uh, third aliquot in which it modifies T and sometimes it modifies C also, and in the fourth helicot, that is the C reaction. Here we have modification of the cytosine residue with the help of hydrazine and NaCl. Now what happens is when the base get modified. For example, in case of this G reaction, when the guanine in this sequence, for example here, here we can see G. Now this if G is modified. piperidine will cleave between this t and g base pairs so when this is cleave we have what we have is radio labeled this end we have a we have t and we have again another t you can see this fragment over here 
Now suppose this G get modifies. So the breakage will be between this A and G. So this fragment will be there. Similarly, uh, so these are the three fragments. Then in case suppose in the second tube, now we have modification of A and G both. Now see, in this strand, if this A get modifies, the break will be between this T and A. If the next A, if this A gets modified, the break between break by piperidine will, will be between G and A. And if this A get modifies, then of course the break cannot take place because it has to be one base pair before. So there will be nothing with that. Similarly, if G get modified, this G will if this G gets modified, the break will be here. If this G get modifies, the break will be here. So accordingly, we have these strings. Same thing goes with this helicot and with the fourth helicot. Now, after these cleavage reactions, we do electrophoresis, that is separation of the charged particles on the basis of the potential difference that we apply. So these are the helicot tubes in which we have separated the fragments with the help of electrophoresis and then we do the autoradiography study since we have the phosphate labeled. So this is how the bends get separated. Next what we do is we read the sequence. The sixth step is the reading of the sequence and uh, it is from this end because since the smallest fragment has moved the lowest in this gel. So this is how we read. So this is A and T. This is uh, this is from Ellicott. Sorry, this is, is from Ellicott T and C. Since there is band only in this this lane, there is no band in this lane, so this band will correspond to T. Again, this band will correspond to T. Then, as you can see, in both these cases, in you can see a band here also and here also. It means this band is because of G. So this band is because of G. This is how the react, how we do the reading of the sequence, and we can find out sequencing with the help of this Maxim Gilbert method. So, but there are certain limitations of this Maxim Gilbert method because since it requires lot of purification with the DNA, and we can read only relatively short sequencing sequences and uh, uh, since we will be doing another method also but this is automation of this technique is actually not available however the another method that is Sanger sequencing where there we uh, require only little amount of DNA purification we do not need any type of restriction digestion and even no labeling is required for the DNA sequencing. So following are the limitations of the Maxim Gilbert method. This was all about Maxim Gilbert method. Thank you.